So, amid all the disasters he's created and then made worse with his solutions, Biden found time last week to host a summit for democracy. What was the point of this summit, you may ask? How did it help you? Well, here's the answer. The threat we face and the solutions we seek have a common antecedent. This is not a struggle of anyone facing it alone. It's all of us. And the commitments we've made to ourselves, to our own people, to one another, will not only strengthen our own democracies by pushing back against autocracies, fighting corruption, and promoting human rights for all people. Fantastic. That'll help pay the soaring bills. And by the way, he says it's not a struggle of anyone facing it alone. We should point out that there is obviously a particular kind of struggle Biden does face alone, and that's reading out the words that are put in front of him. But to be fair, this time he did at least manage to get out the three big themes of his summit for democracy. He's going to push back against authoritarianism, fight corruption and champion human rights. Brilliant. Of course, it's vital to push back against authoritarianism, and Biden might want to start by pushing back against his nasty little weasel of an attorney general, Merrick Garland, who's sending in the FBI to intimidate political opponents, to get parents, sorry, domestic terrorists, to shut up and put up with the ideological indoctrination of their kids at school. You know, the kind of thing that goes on in authoritarian regimes like China. Maybe Biden could do something about that once he's done lecturing the world at his pathetic little democracy Zoom call. Oh, I mean, summit. In fact, while he's at it, maybe he could tell Merrick Garland to stop weaponizing the justice system to rig elections in the ruling party's favor like they do in, what was the word again? Oh, autocracies. Come to think of it, perhaps the best thing Biden could do if he wants to push back against authoritarianism is just fire Merrick Garland, who was sold to us as a mild-mannered moderate, but who's turning out to be an absolutely rabid, hyper-partisan authoritarian. Although there are plenty of those in this appalling Biden regime, there's Fauci, who's now telling Americans to spy on each other and demand to see their papers when inviting others into their homes. Has he been watching movies about the Stasi and East Germany under communism? There's Ron Klain, who thinks it's fine to work around the Constitution to impose totally unjustified anti-science vaccine mandates. Perhaps now that every single court where the Biden mandates have come up has thrown them out, Ron Klain will find a way to work around the courts. Authoritarian dictatorships seem to be good at that kind of thing. Just like they're good at centralizing power, and boy, is this Biden regime excited about doing that. But it can't be what Biden wants, because he's against authoritarianism. He's for democracy. He just told us that at his summit. He also told us he was against corruption. Better still, he's going to fight corruption. Earlier this week, I released the first U.S. government strategy on countering corruption, which elevates our fight against transnational corruption, a crime that drains public resources and hollows out the ability of governments to deliver for the people and just evaporates confidence that the people must need to have in their government. Isn't that great? He's going to elevate his fight against transnational corruption. I wonder if that will include pushing for an investigation into the son of a former vice president who corruptly sold access to his father to the foreign governments involved in the exact transnational policy areas that his father, the vice president, was responsible for. You know, in countries like Ukraine or China. Or perhaps the brother of a former vice president who got contracts from the military for construction projects, even though he knew nothing about construction. Or the other brother of a former vice president who got contracts for energy projects in the Caribbean by selling his access to the vice president. I'm sure Biden will be on to all of that. After all, he knows so much about it. All that experience, you see, 50 years of it. And he's so right that corruption evaporates the confidence people need to have in their government. That's why Biden would never accept in America the kind of setup you get in, I don't know, corrupt banana republics or whatever, where the president's senior advisor has a brother who runs a lobbying firm that suddenly gets a whole bunch of new big business clients the second his brother has access to the levers of power. And Biden would never actually employ, as his secretary of state, Someone who set up a lobbying firm specifically to cash in on his ability to spin through the revolving door between business and government, let alone fill his cabinet and senior administration positions with people from that exact same lobbying firm. Unthinkable. That's the kind of thing you get in corrupt regimes. Not the Biden regime, right? 
The Biden regime is a decent regime, a caring regime, a humanitarian regime. That's why it's in such a strong position to lecture the world on human rights. What was it again? Promoting human rights for all people. Promoting human rights for all people. Wait, does that include the human rights of the young girls being sold into slavery in Afghanistan as a direct consequence of Biden's shameful surrender to the Taliban? The human rights of the rest of the Afghan population thrown into poverty? The human rights of the kids killed by Biden's wag the dog drone strike cynically launched to try and distract from his disastrous withdrawal? I guess not. Does Biden's commitment include the human rights of the 11-month-old baby abandoned at the U.S.-Mexico border as a direct consequence of his immigration policies, the children abandoned on the Rio Grande Riverbank, the children dumped over the border like sacks of potatoes? Does it include the human rights of the girls raped and sexually abused as they're exploited by the evil people smugglers Biden has incentivized. When Biden lectures everyone on human rights, is he talking about the kids being thrown out of school because of Democrats' insane anti-science vaccine mandates? The people who can't afford to heat their home this winter because of Biden's war on energy, who can't afford to feed their family? No, didn't think so. As usual with today's Democrats, they are guilty of the exact thing they lecture everyone else about. Maybe someone should make Biden watch this little moment from his Summit for Democracy. We have to empower our citizens to hold accountable, hold all of us accountable, the highest ideals, and to make sure our actions align with our words. Yeah, exactly. Make sure your actions align with your words. And here's how we hold him accountable. We laugh in the face of his windbag summit of hypocrisy, sanctimony and self-righteousness. And we tell Biden clearly, you, Biden, are the authoritarian. You, Biden, are the one who's the most corrupt president in history. For decades, the puppet of your donors, exploiting your public office for private gain, your sleazy son selling access to shady foreign governments. And it's your policies, Biden policies creating humanitarian disasters in Afghanistan, at the southern border, and now, frankly, right across this country. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.